destroy our Lord, our host is his name. All hail the king, all hail the king. Our redeemer is strong, our Lord, our host is his name. All hail the king, all hail the king. Our redeemer is strong, our Lord, our host. Shalom, shalom. This is El Dayo from One Nation, One Power coming back to you guys one more time today. May giving all praise and glory to Ahiah, his son, Yeshia, and in the Ruach Hokadesh, the Holy Spirit giving honor to elders out there, honor to deacons, and to all who deserve honor. Uh, don't believe nothing I say. You know, we got brothers out there teaching this, teaching that. I'm going to give you a breakdown on the children of Israel. Everybody want to know where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where the children of Israel at? You got these people arguing, they on the continent of Africa. You got people arguing, they over here, they arguing. We're going to just stay in the Bible. We're not going to use no arterial, alternative books. We're just going to stay in the Bible, brothers and sisters. Hello. So I want you to blow that dust off your Bible. Don't believe nothing I said. I'm about to give you the word of the living God. Are you hearing me out there? I'm going to give you the word of the living God as it is written. As it is written, according to Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, according to Psalms 119, 104. As it is written. Open up your Bible and go with me. We're going to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. We're going to hit specific pieces. We're going to get the meat out of Isaiah 42. And then we're going to go to Isaiah 44. So get your pen, get your paper, and go along with me. You got to see it for yourself. No longer can we just believe people and take them at their word. That's what got us into this mess. So go with me to Isaiah chapter 42. And uh, let's start at verse 1. We're going to hit specific verses in Isaiah 42. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised we reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. My friend, this is an identifying marker. This is the son. This is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This is Yeshia. This is who this is right here. Verse 4. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. And the isles shall wait for his law. And the isles shall wait for his law. So for all of you out there that's teaching that Jesus Christ didn't come to bring no law, you need to go sit down, learn again, read Isaiah 42, 1 through 4. Are you with me? We had just identified a prophecy about who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that he was going to bring forth the law. The law, spoken of in verse 4. Let's read it again. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. And the isles shall wait for his law. This is a prophetic prophecy of who the world calls Jesus Christ shall bring forth the law and shall set judgment in the earth. So there you go. Now, we're going to deal with just a couple of other verses. Because I want you to see what's in Isaiah 42. Other than Jesus the Christ bringing forth the law in the earth along with judgment. Now, let's go. Let's go down to verse 10. I want you to see this. Go along with me. Isaiah 42 and 10. Sing unto the Lord a new song, a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. And his praise from where? The end of the earth. So Jerusalem is in the, on the continent of Africa. 
which is the center of the earth. But right here he's saying, bring forth the praise from the other end of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song in his praise from the end of the earth. That ye that go down to the sea. You that go down where? To the sea. You that go down where? To the sea. You that go down where? To the sea. We're going to break down this verse for you real least. Isaiah 42 and 10. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. We, my friend, are living in in America and on, on in the northern hemisphere, living close to the west coast, as far as you can go, from the other end of the earth, sing a praise. Them that down there by the sea, do we live by the sea? Yes, we do. Do we live by the sea? Yes, we do. This is a future prophecy of where the children of Israel will be. Let's keep reading. Isaiah 42 and 10. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein. The isles, the isles, the isles, the isles, the isles. And the inhabitants thereof. That word isles is short for islands. The islands. And the inhabitants thereof. Let's keep reading. I wanted to identify that this passage is talking about the other end of the earth where the people living in the islands. But there's something else going on with these people living in the islands. And we're going to get it right now. So, we're in Isaiah 42 and 10. Let's go to verse 11 and 12. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Verse 12. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. What? And declare his praise in the islands. What? And declare his praise where? In the islands. Oh, my friends. We just identified the prophet Isaiah prophesying that the Most High's people would be inhabiting the islands. Well, the Holy Ghost make this easy or what? <laughs> so they, according to Isaiah 42 and 12, let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Okay, now these people are in the islands. All right. All right. I can go for that because the Bible said that. Now, let's go down. Let's go down to verse... Uh, Let's go down to verse 18, Isaiah 42 and 18. Now we just identified that this prophecy is to people that shall be living in the islands. <laughs> America is an island. Cuba is an island. Japan is on an island. Uh, uh, Brazil is on an island. Are you guys hearing me out there? <laughs> the end of the earth, according to scripture, not according to me. Now let's see what else is going on while these people are living on these islands. Let's go down to verse 18. Isaiah 42 and 18. Let's go. You, ye, hear ye death, hear ye death, hear ye death, and look, ye blind, that ye may see. Verse 19. Who is blind? But my servant. But who? My servant. My servant is blind right now. Our death as my messenger, as my the death, the messenger is death, and the servant is blind. They blind and they deaf. Most are saying they can't see or hear. His servant and his messenger. Who is blind but my servant? Our death as my messenger that I sent. 
Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Verse 20. Sing many things, sing many things, sing many things, many, many things, sing many things, but thou observest not, but not paying attention to nothing. Seeing many things, but not observing nothing. Opening the ear, but he heareth not. Opening the ear, but he heareth not. Let's see what the Most High is talking about. Verse 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness. Say. He will magnify the law. He will what? Magnify the law. He will what? Magnify the law. He will what? Magnify the law. That means to make it even bigger. He will magnify the law, Isaiah 42, 21, and make it honorable. See, it's going to be an honorable thing to keep the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High God in the last day. He's going to make, he's going to magnify his law, Isaiah 42 and 21, and he's going to make it honorable. That's what he's doing right now. Verse 22. Let's see why the servants are deaf and blind. And they're not observing or paying attention to nothing. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed. Or they robbed and spoiled and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They snared in what? Holes. They snared in what? Holes. This is Isaiah 42, 22. Where they at? They snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. What? Hid in prison houses. What? Hid in prison houses. What? Hid in prison houses. What is the two major nationality demographics that make up the prison? Mexicans and what? So-called blacks make up the prison system. They snared in holes and hid in prison houses. Let's see what the most I gotta say. They are for a prey. Uh oh, somebody praying on them. And none deliver it. Nobody saying deliver them. For a spoil, uh oh, and none said restore, and nobody saying restore, nobody saying give these people back. They don't belong in that. They unjustly incarcerated. They shouldn't be there. One person get this low of a, of a sentence, and these people over here getting twenty five and thirty five and forty five and fifty and thirty and eighty and ninety. Verse twenty three. Who among you will give ear to this? Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? See, this is a future prophecy. For the time to come. Verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Where is Jacob and Israel right now? According to verse number 22. In prison houses. Who gave him for a sport? Verse 23. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? They got all 12 tribes right there. Who gave... Who is the one responsible for putting them in prison houses? Let's keep reading. Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law, neither were they obedient unto his law. There go your answer while we make up majority of the prison houses. We don't, we were taught not to keep the laws of God. So God said, okay, you're no good for nothing. So I'm going to use Psalm 17, 13, and 14, the wicked, to set up laws to put you in prison houses. Who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? They're snared in holes. They're hid in prison houses. Verse 25. Therefore he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle 
and it had set him on fire round about, yet he knew it not. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. The Most High said, I put him in prison. Jacob and Israel, where they at? In prison houses. Where did we just read they, that this Bible told us that these prison houses are located? In the islands. Go back to Isaiah 42 and 12. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Where are these prison houses? In the islands. Sorry, my friend, but these prison houses here are not on the continent of Africa. According to Isaiah 42, 22, they in the islands. Makes a lot of sense, don't it? Since we make up majority of the prison houses, so-called blacks and so-called Mexicans, Jacob and Israel are filling up the prison houses because their ancestors were disobedient to the law. But the Most High has promised he's going to make the law honorable again and respectful. So, where is Jacob and Israel? They in the islands of the sea in prison houses. This is El Dario from One Nation, One Power. Shalom.